Thank you, Mr. Chair. Gentlemen, thank you very much. And um, I also want to, to thank you and the men and women that work diligently in the Intelligence Committee uh, for the, the work that they do for the United States of America. Um, Admiral Rogers, uh, you have stated twice now, you've really stressed this point that uh, you must be faster and more agile in your responses. And so our discussion this morning will go back to a discussion that we had in September of this last year in front of this body. Because I, I believe it is important that you understand the capabilities that exist out there and are readily available to the United States Cyber Command. And this past September, I asked you about a Government Accountability Office report that stated the Department of Defense does not have visibility of all National Guard unit cyber capabilities because the department has not maintained a database that identifies the National Guard unit cyber related emergency response capabilities as required by law. And I was a bit alarmed when you stated that you haven't seen the report. Um, it was a report that took about a year to compile and was presented to both this, uh, this committee and the House Armed Services Committee. And four months later, I still have not received an answer from you, uh, my questions for the record. And as of this morning, all of the GAO recommendations are still open from this report. So it's been four months, and I would just like an update on that, if you have been able to read the report, and where is the department at in regards to tracking National Guard cyber capabilities? Um, yes, ma'am. So first, um, we didn't get your question until December, but I, I acknowledge, hey, you have formally asked us this. Um, first, as U.S. Cyber Command, I'm the operational commander. Manning, training, and equipping is a function of services and the department. For me in my role, I track the operational readiness levels of all National Guard and Reserve units that are allocated to the mission force. So I bore into them in the exact same way I do the active side. In terms of more broadly, how is the department tracking the set of skills that are available both in the reserve component? I'd argue it's the same challenges there in the active component. How do you take advantage of the breadth of capability that's broader than just a particular military occupational specialty, for example? And I'm the first to acknowledge, after talking to my teammates at OSD and the services, I don't think we have a good answer for you. I'll give you, I'll have something in writing for you within the next week or so, because I do acknowledge that we need to do that. I do appreciate that, because there, how long has the United States been experiencing attacks from uh, entities outside of the United States? Uh, you could argue we've been in this cyber dynamic for over a, a decade. I mean, it's gotten worse, but... A decade, and so we have taken the steps of developing Cyber Command and the capabilities that exist both in our reserves, National Guard, and active component units. And to become more faster or faster and more agile, we need to know what those capabilities are. So if you have a solution to that on how we can track those capabilities, uh, we need to figure that out. Uh, many of these units have the capability of defending networks, and yet we're not utilizing those capabilities, and we don't know where they exist, to be honest. So please don't take from my comment that we don't believe that the role of the Guard and Reserve is an important. If you look in the last 12 months, We've got um, two cyber protection teams from the Guard that have been mobilized. We're, we've brought online in the Guard and the Reserve National Mission teams for the first time within the last year. I mean, it's great to see how the Guard and Reserve are developing more and more capability. I mean, that's a real strength for us collectively. Absolutely, and I think we'll continue to see those develop um, even more in the future, but we need to be able yes, to utilize those capabilities um, that exist out there. Um, so you know that many of our best soldiers in the National Guard and Reserves come from the private sector. Uh, I know this from some of my own guardsmen that, that worked full-time uh, in computer technology and cyber technology. And you, were, you stated in September you were trying to figure out how better to leverage the National Guard. And do you have a response for that? Have, have you thought of ways that we might be able to use those Guard units um, more readily. This is a topic that, in fact, I just was talking to General Lengel, the director of the, the Guard Bureau, a few weeks ago to say, hey, look, this is something in 2017 I want us to sit down. I think there's a couple of specific mission areas where the capabilities of the Guard and Reserve are really well optimized. Um, because I'd be the first to admit 
the answer can't be every time, well, just throw the active component at this. I don't mm -hmm. think that's an optimal approach for us to do in business. So you'll see this play out for us in 2017. Um, we got to work through the Title 32 versus Title 10 issue. What, what role, what's the right way to do this? Absolutely. Do we put it within the, the defense support to civil authority construct? I like that because it's a framework that we already have. I'm a big fan of let's not reinvent the wheel when it comes to cyber. How do we take advantage of processes and structures and authorities that are already in place? Um, that's one thing you'll see some specific changes on within an apartment. We're, we're working through that right now on the policy side. Very good. Well, I appreciate it. I know my time is expiring, so um, I look forward to working with you on that, Admiral Rogers.